Welcome to the first unit of Communicative English. In this unit, we're going to understand the difference between how to use language, which is what we covered in the grammar section, and how to use language to communicate effectively. If you don't think there is a big difference, well, you're in for a shock. In this first unit, we're going to have a look at the single most important rule that you have to remember to communicate effectively. This rule, which the other rules continually refer to, is the basis for easy communicative English. Really. If there's one rule, although I'm assuming you want to know the others, this is it. Okay, to introduce the rule and why it's vital, I would like you to analyse the following sentence and see if you can find anything wrong with it. Think about grammar, structure, meaning, everything. Before we do that though, I want to set the context. You're writing an email to someone about the meeting, you'll see about this in a second, which is going to happen tomorrow morning. Okay, here we go. What did you think? Well, let's break down the sentence. The sentence is made up of two clauses. In each clause, you have the passive voice. Just to very quickly recap, the basic rules for forming the passive is to use a form of be plus plus participle, or as you might know it, the third form. If you're a little unsure about the passive, please stop the video now and click on the links in the video description or in one of the boxes. In this video, I'm going to assume you know the grammatical principles behind the passive voice. So, as I said, if you're a little bit unsure, please spend five to ten minutes to refresh your memory. Getting back to our example sentence, in terms of language, everything is also fine. I don't think anyone should have any problems working out what the words mean. So, what's the problem? Well, let's remember the context. You're writing to someone about the problems presented here. The meeting is happening tomorrow morning and there's a problem. Let's think about this from the point of view of what is, or more accurately, what's not being communicated. The partner was told. Questions you should immediately have are, who told the partner? You, another secretary, another partner, the client, who? Well, this is important from the point of view of finding out, one, who was the source, and two, possibly the hierarchy of the source. The message might be more important, coming from another partner or a client. Also, by not identifying the person who told the partner, we might even have doubts as to if the partner was told in the first place. Was the partner actually told? I know it's happened to me if someone's asked me if I've done something and I say, yes, of course it was done, and then quickly I'll do it because I'd forgotten. So we can all agree that important information is missing. In the second case, we know something is double booked, but what or who? The meeting room, equipment like video conferencing equipment or a laptop or a projector, another participant, the partner, the client. If this correspondence is seen by someone who doesn't know the context, they're not informed. This leaves them with a few choices. One, guess. Well, we, we all know what kind of problems that can cause. And two, be forced to contact someone to find out exactly what's going on, which takes both time and effort that doesn't need to be spent. We can see that in this case, the passive voice is not helpful at all. So, what's the solution? Simple. Use the active voice. We can begin to understand why simply by looking at the differences in the structures. The passive voice is object, verb, subject. That is, the thing being affected, how it's being affected, in other words, the action, and then who is doing the action. Generally speaking, if we consider the way that we would normally communicate a message, this is back to front. And as we've seen already, the person doing the verbal action may not be identified. Let's consider the active voice. Subject, verb, object. That is, the personal thing that is doing something, the verb that is what they are doing, and then, finally, who or what is being affected. 
From the point of view of clear communication, the whole relationship is presented. No information is left out. Okay, let's change the original sentence to see what it would look like in the active voice. As you can see, I've introduced some possible subjects and look at the effect it has on the sentence. Suddenly, we know everything. Nothing is missed out. Everyone who might read this email will be informed and know that actions have been performed. The communication is clear and the structures are simple to understand. The reason why the active voice is so powerful, and it's not just because it presents all of the information, which is also incredibly important, it's because in English, the way you, the way you think automatically happens in the active voice. Think about it. You get a complicated sentence structure or a complicated message, and the first thing you do is, what's happening here? Who is doing what to who? This basic message and the way you form the basic message is in the active voice. Subject, verb, object. So why not write in the way that everyone automatically thinks? Okay, I'd like to talk you, uh, tell you a little bit about the questions below. I'd like you to tackle the questions below by reading each situation and working out what is the basic main message. To do this, you'll have to identify the subject or invent a likely subject, work out what the main operative verb is or are, and then the subjects those verbs are affecting. In some cases, there'll be a number of verbs which you'll have to identify and put into the correct sentence structure. Take your time, and if you want to review information about the passive, read someone else's views on the active voice, or when it's ready, watch my video about when you can and can't use the passive, please click on the links in the video descriptions.